Engineer Man here. Time to learn about Node.js promises using the Q library. It's part one of a multi-part series. No time to waste. Let's do this. Today's level is intermediate. We're making two assumptions today. One, that you have some JavaScript knowledge. And two, that you've implemented any Node.js callback ever. So what are promises? The purpose of promises, besides making your life a lot easier, is to change the way we can structure asynchronous functions that don't immediately return a value something that would be automatically expected in a synchronous function. Since any promise producing function can implement a then or spread function, a long set of asynchronous operations that depend on one another can be executed in a somewhat synchronous manner, rather than relying on callback nesting. Error handling is also greatly simplified by consolidating error handling into one location. For instance, here we can see what is colloquially referred to as callback hell which is essentially a bunch of Node.js style callback functions that are nested within one another. So for instance, this is function step one. This is gonna be a bunch of functions that depend on the result of the previous function. So step one has a single argument, which is a callback function that has error and value one as arguments. So inside here, you would check an error and then you would handle that error just for step one. You would then call step two using the value from step one. And then everything is the same all the way down until you call step six. Here, you can finally do something with that value. But as you can see, you would have to handle errors at every single point of this program. And this is just very messy. So now let's look at what this would look like as a promise chain. So promise style, you can see it's a lot shorter. So in this case, we can call the step one function. Now step one function in this example is a promise generating function, meaning we have the ability to call dot then. And when we call dot then, it takes two arguments, one or two arguments. The first argument is gonna be if the promise is fulfilled. And the second argument is gonna be if the promise is rejected, which is to say that the promise threw an error. Fulfilled means it returned a single value. Rejected means it threw an error. And here it just creates a chain. So we have this first one, which is the value of step one. We then call step two with the value one and we get value two and it just continues down the chain. Notice that it's flat. It doesn't continue going out to the right. And this could be done as many times as you needed. Finally, you have your value six here, which you can then do something with. Now there's a special thing here, it's the catch function. And what that does is if there's an error that's thrown in any of the six steps, what it will do is it'll just flow directly down to the catch function and it'll contain the error. So if I were to do throw test here, then the value of error would be, would be test. And it wouldn't even run any of this. It would just completely bypass it. Let me just get rid of that. Okay, I kind of jumped ahead, but let's talk about what a then and what a spread is. So the only difference between then and spread is what that promise returns. So in this function, which I'm calling something async single result. So in that function, there's gonna be a return statement and it's gonna return just a single value, perhaps return one or return a string or something like that. In that case, that value is gonna end up in result. You would use a then in this case. For spread, kind of the same. However, spread is gonna be a promise generating function that returns an array. So something async three results. So this return an array, and in that array would be individual results. Could be one, two, true, null, whatever it is. Could also be a whole nother promise. So in here, I would then have access to result one, result two, and result three, which would be the values from that promise producing function. And that's it. Hopefully everyone is smarter having watched this video. If I forgot to cover something or you'd like to request a video, post a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. And remember, this is part one of a multi-part series, so be on the lookout for part two and beyond. See you next time.